Hey everybody, this is Mark Heaps. I'm here for Creative Pro and I'm gonna be showing a tip today regarding color in your design. It's a real simple one, but let's check it out. Okay, so what we're talking about today is complementary colors. If you remember or ever took a graphic design class or a visual communication or art class, you know the foundation that we're typically taught in any kind of 101 setting is complementary color. And what is it? Well, basically when you pick a color that you're using in a design, you wanna have another color that stands out against it but doesn't feel too abrasive. It has a positive response from people that are viewing it and that's known as a complementary color. Typically, it's 180 degrees on the opposite end of the color wheel. So let's go ahead and take our map here and first let's get it colored. We're gonna select everything and I'm gonna use a light green to actually colorize the fill value on the map. Now I'm gonna take my stroke property over here and make it white so that it separates all of the states, makes it a little bit clearer. Now usually in Adobe Illustrator, when we wanna recolor our artwork, we go up to the edit menu here and we come down to where it says edit colors you see a series of options in different ways that we can adjust the colors, the balance, we can change front to back, we can do different blends, we can convert it to different modes like CMYK, and we also have a feature called recolor artwork. We're not gonna use any of these. There's nothing in here that actually says, give me a complementary equivalent of the color swatch that I'm using now. So how do we do it? Well, there's actually a really easy way. If I uh, deselect this by clicking off of the map, imagine you wanted to create some kind of infographic talking about particular set of states in the nation. Well, I'm gonna grab the uh, lasso tool here, um, which is basically the direct select tool in lasso form, and I'm gonna drag up the center states, okay? So right in the middle of the country and close that out. Now, I'm only selecting those anchor points, but because they're tethered to the object, I can still edit the fill property within that object. So I'm gonna go up to my color panel now, and that's where the magic happens. Um, if you don't know where this is, you can go up to window, come down to where it says color, and that will bring that panel up for you. And this is more similar to what we might see in other Adobe products like Photoshop, After Effects, InDesign, etc. So let's click on that fill property there. And now I happen to be in the HSB mode for the color panel, but in the pull down menu on the top, you can change this to any of the other modes. But here's where you find that simple feature, complement. So now when I choose this, it automatically calculates what is the complementary color value in saturation, brightness, and hue of the source color that we started with. So now I didn't have to do any math, I didn't have to use recolor artwork in any way, and it was a simple one-click operation from that panel. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Mark, why wouldn't I just use invert colors? That's the opposite, which is what defines complementary colors, right? Not exactly, because if we got into the math of color modes and color gamuts and image spaces, and it's complicated. It doesn't actually work very well inside of Illustrator if you just invert. Um, and you're not actually getting a true complement. So let's select all of the states here, and this time we'll fill it with a nice dark blue, okay? Now I'm gonna set my stroke back to being white again. And this time, we'll start with Texas again, we'll go up some of these middle states, and let's choose complement. So again, set my foreground fill here, choose complement, and you'll see we get this kind of dark burnt orange, right? Let's zoom in here and get a closer look. Now watch what happens if I select New Mexico and Colorado, and instead of complement, we choose invert. So we choose that. And there you should be able to see, if I zoom in, there's a very clear difference in those two tones. So invert and complement are not exactly the same depending on how the color is being processed. There you go. Now you can see the difference between invert and complement, and you know, a really quick, single click way of finding the complementary color in your design projects. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.